All right, hello again. Um, here we see what happens, uh, what was given, I should say, to uh, some of the troops, actually all the troops, who were uh, returning home from World War II. It was called the GI Bill of Rights, and it was a bunch of benefits and programs to help servicemen readjust to civilian life, training programs, uh, loans that were given out, uh, opportunities to open businesses, all sorts of things to, to help the returning soldier um, go back to the United States and sort of become a regular civilian uh, after World War II. Uh, then we have James Farmer, civil rights leader, who founded the Congress of Racial Equality, known as core, which of course will be a, um, will play a much larger role as we continue once we get to the civil rights part. Uh, but James Farmer, an important uh, civil rights advocate. And there is the Congress of Racial Equality. Uh, one of the things that they did is they sponsored, they were an interracial organization that uh, stopped or was trying to fight discrimination, but they front sponsored the Freedom Riders, which we will definitely learn about uh, as we move closer to the civil rights things, but they were people who were trying to desegregate uh, buses and bus stations. And see, a lot of this, you know, originally had its its root, um, you know, not say from World War One, but certainly when, uh, or sorry, World War One, World War Two, but, uh, you know, African Americans that fought in World War Two, uh, you know, coming back, and saying, well, we fought just as hard and risked our life just as much. We still don't get equality. And so it was sort of a catalyst, uh, the experience in World War II, um, for the civil rights movement in some ways. Uh, internment, one of the uh, dark stories uh, of the United States. And this applied to Japanese and American citizens of Japanese ancestry. So you could be an American citizen born in the United States um, and just have Japanese parents or grandparents. Uh, and if you were living on the West Coast, you were subject to removal from your home and then placed under confinement, as you can see here, barbed wire fences and under guard. Uh, especially during wartime. And this would happen if you are a West Coast person who is Japanese or of Japanese descent. Uh, the United States military was fearful that, not if, but when Japanese, the, uh, Japan attacks the West Coast, that the Japanese and Japanese Americans will somehow be loyal to Japan and not the United States and help with the Japanese invasion. Uh, obviously, that, that didn't happen, and there were very, 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 very few, I think maybe one or maybe two incidents um, of any sort of spying uh, by Japanese or Japanese Americans. And so it was really a badly misplaced uh, a law. And, you know, the poor people, they had all of their possessions. They had like a week or a few days to sell off all their possessions. They were forced to move from their home. They had to build their own barracks, and I mean, it was just really, really bad bad conditions, um, and really, really unfortunate uh, time in our nation's history. And as you can see, the Japanese American Citizens League was fighting against stuff like this. Um, you know, you can, I can't even imagine a sign like this uh, being, you know, now, nowadays. Um, it's just, it's, it's so offensive to even see, but this is the truth. This is really, really what happened. And uh, the Japanese American Citizens League tried to fight this. All right. Thank you so much for watching.